On me in three, two, one. And three. <laughs> seen Wayne's World, I've right? seen, Yeah, I've seen how this goes. Martin City, take three, Mark. Violent clap. We need to do a softer clap. Let's do a softer, gentler clap. Yes. Martin City, take three, Mark. Pinky up. Good day to you, sir. Oh, good day to you as well, gentlemen. <laughs> Indeed, old spice. <laughs> old spice. <laughs> it feels weird, but there's gonna be like music and... Yeah. What kind of music? Royalty-free music, so probably classic. <laughs> Keep the cameras rolling, let's drink. Yeah, let's drink some more. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of What's on Draft. I'm Tom, and we are in Kansas City, Missouri, or Kansas? Missouri. Missouri, and we're at Martin City Brewing with Nick, the head brewer. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. And you picked a wonderful time to come to Kansas City. Yes. As evidenced by the sweat pouring off yes. of your body. Very reasonable temperature and no humidity at all. Oh, it's perfect. Nick, you're the head brewer of Martin City Brewing. Mm -hmm. You've been here since the brew house started, right? Right. In 2013, we started this endeavor. Uh, they, the original of the pub was next door. Uh, this place came for sale a few years later, and they decided to put a brewery over here instead. I saw, so you guys have a lab upstairs too. Mm -hmm. so you, yes. Is it your own Brett culture, like a house culture? It, it's kind of a mix now, but it was one just kind of randomly came in. But now we're kind of, I'm just keep collecting from the fooder and reusing every time. So we're getting our own house blend of Britannomyces. And awesome. All right, well this is just a regular IPA. So we're starting? The regular Hardway IPA. Comes in about 7% alcohol, about 65 BUs. It's, a, it's one of our more popular selling beers. Yeah. For a while we had a lot of IPAs, and then we, so we swing back and forth between yeah. too many and not enough. You guys can this one? We do indeed. We can our Belgian Blonde, our Belgian Abbey, the Hardway IPA, and our City Saison. Just Saison. went cans last week. How far into the market are your cans? Are you guys in across state lines? We're just in lines? Kansas City. Or, well, we are across state lines. The state lines is well, state lines right there. So yeah, it's a mile really. from here. But our distributors on both sides of the state. Uh, we're mostly in Kansas City area worldwide next year. Yeah, world domination, international distribution by 2017. Right. Okay, I'm gonna finish this IPA. And what, what do you dry hop that one with? Uh, Citra and Centennial. Okay. But the okay. Centennial gives it that kind of resiny, piney character, and yeah. the Citra gives it a nice fruity. And again, uh, easily on par with some of the better San Diego IPAs. But did you get that on camera? You got that, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks, all right. What are you drinking? I'm drinking our Portier. It's a brandy barrel triple. Ooh, you guys use a lot of spirit barrels, but you, you kind of use a lot of different spirits. You couldn't get bourbon barrels for a long time. They were hard to find. Everyone was reusing them so we could find brandy barrels. So I started doing a lot of stuff with brandy barrels. Okay. Brandy barrels work really well for this beer. It takes the fruitiness of the triple and just adds even more kind of a alcoholic fruitiness to it. Nice. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to say what's on draft at the beginning. <laughs> what's on draft? Hey, Nick, what's on draft today? Beer. <laughs> What's next on the board? Got our Belgian Abbey, which is kind of a basic Belgian double. Uh, a little maltier, it's got some nice toffee, chocolate notes to it. Like good toffee. It's like yeah. kind of raisiny kind of taste to it. A little dark, dark fruit, yeah. One of your brewers was telling me about the yeast strain that you use for the Abbey. Sort of a house strain that you've had started out, you got it from a yeast supplier a long time right. ago, but you've been able to cultivate it forward. We just keep that. harvesting it every time. I think I'm on generation 156 or something now That's on awesome. this one. And it's cool because that, that doesn't always work. Yeast going for so many right. generations, it'll get off flavors, but this... Like, a lot of the American strains will mutate like that. You'll, yeah. You'll, but this one just keeps going and going. And yeah, I'm, I wouldn't do it with WOP01, yeah. but yeah, with this, it, it tastes great. And it's very true to style for a Belgian double. Mm -hmm. I really like it a lot. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It quickly becomes my favorite and I sleep on the Right. On the floor here. At the What's brewery. the ABV on that one? <laughs> this one came 7.5. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can't drink too much yeah. of it. Yeah. I mean, when we first opened, that was what I was drinking. I'm like, I gotta stop drinking that. Well, now you're drinking an 11%. Now I'm drinking 11% beer at 9 o'clock in the morning. Hashtag brew life. What's that one called? You just call it the Abbey? Just Belgian Abbey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't have a lot of fancy names at the start. Like the hard way got its name with the big Anheuser Busch. Oh, was that uh, that stupid commercial they yeah. made? But we were actually in a day before the copyright, so we filed for copyright a day before, and there was kind of a... They got mad? They got mad, and we went back and forth, and... But you won? We won. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Well, I'm glad you won. I didn't know that that was the story. Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm beer. sorry, yeah. The Hardway IPA, yeah. That's funny. They spend more on lawyers in a month than you do in your entire brew house in yep. five years. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? You gonna, you gonna get more? Oh, of course. <laughs> Should probably get more beer, huh? Well, I didn't know we could take beer breaks. That's, it's one of those kind of shows. Oh, yeah. Are you going to switch to something lower alcohol? Yeah, I'll go to the Abbey. I'll switch down to 7.5%. Does that affect, like, the brew schedule or what you guys are brewing, like the, the temperature variations here, or like in the winter time? Fermentation makes a lot of heat, and so usually it's always taken away, so it controls pretty well. I've never had to 
brew when it's cold. Actually, when it's cold, we keep the doors closed and it's wonderful. We don't really get winter in San Diego, so well, foreign concept. You should try it, it's, it's a great. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. Oh yeah. It <laughs> seems cool. It's like snow and it's wet. Yeah. I see you've got a fooder back here, which is yep. cool. A year and a half ago, all our barrel aged beers were taken off. We were doing a lot of stuff with Britannomyces. And oh, cool. we got a fooder, so that way we can do a lot of Britannomyces beers. Yeah, there's a brewery in San Diego called Burning Beer. They have two of those exact same. Mm -hmm. These are fooder crafters. These guys are out of St. Louis. They're yeah. Making, uh, Missouri Oak. They're growing so fast. They, they're People really like, seem to like them. They're the only local manufacturers of fooders. So. Kansas City has a long history with brewing, though. Like, you guys have buildings here that are, like, from the 1800s. Imperial Brewery up there downtown. There's a lot of them there, and then Prohibition came, and, and we never really recovered from yeah. Prohibition, so. It's kind of cool, I guess, to brew, because you're from here too, so I guess it's kind of cool to brew in a city that has such a rich history with that mm -hmm. and kind of be the new chapter of it, you know? 15 years of doing brewing, just watching the whole craft brew scene change in 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to be in brewing. Yeah, definitely. This is your fruited Berliner? Uh-huh, we call it Purple Train. Purple Train. Did you name it that after Prince passed away? Or was Actually, it, it was kind of weird because we named it that, and okay. then three days later, Prince died. I'm not saying we killed Prince, but I'm saying right. that was a weird coincidence. It is a weird coincidence. So originally with blueberry and lemon, and now this one has a different... Blood orange, plum, and sour cherries. The plum kind of gives it an earthy kind of flavor to it. This does seem to be more of a trend now, Berliners, and especially fruited Berliners. I love Berliner Vices because it's nice if you want to drink and not get wasted. Right. No, you gotta take three sips of a sour beer. Like the first one's a shock, the second one, your tongue gets used to it, and the third one, you can actually start to taste right. everything. So yeah. three sip rule on sours. Well, I like that one a lot. And this one I tried yesterday, this is a summer porter. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little lighter in color, but it still has all the flavor of a porter. So it still has that big chocolate and toast character. It's a nice medium body porter, but it's crushable. Like I can drink it. We do have a robust porter we do in the wintertime, and it's, okay. it's kind of a variation of that recipe. It's like a bigger version bigger, of this. Yeah. I like that one. That one's one I take home frequently. GoPro Martin City Mark II. I was getting to fly, never mind. Okay. Currently, like the big player in town is Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went to college at the University of Missouri, Columbia, mm -hmm. and everybody from St. Louis was there. And they're like, ah, oh, you're drinking Bud Light, you're drinking Bud Light. And I'm like, haha, St. Louis is better. I'm like, okay. So I went to the store, and there was this Boulevard beer from Kansas City, 10 penny ale. And I said, I'm going to take that. I'm going to show these guys. I started walking around the parties, haha, Kansas City beer. Haha. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. That's the start of the descent into craft beer and right. becoming a brewer and just. Mine was Stone, my first mm -hmm. craft beer that I had the San Diego equivalent of what Boulevard is here. Yeah. They're like the big brewery in town. Same reaction, I was like, I didn't know beer could oh. taste good. My first stone was Arrogant Bastard, and I'm like, whoa, man, yeah. you put that on a label? That's awesome. Yeah, when I lived here, I was never old enough to drink Boulevard, and now, and there's all these other breweries now, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna go to Martin City. Oh, free publicity? Uh, let me see if I can get that in my schedule sometime here. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> right. Quite a few good breweries around here. Thorn Label's doing a great amount of business. Tinder Block's got a great tap room, the biggest tap room I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Crane Brewing's coming out with a lot of sours and saisons and farmhouse ales. Okay. Casey Beer sales. Company, sorry, yeah. my competition. Yeah. They're all German and they make the best German beers I've ever had in my life. Family oriented tap room and patio. It's growing pretty quick. Awesome. Well, a great source of American pride is all the wonderful craft beer that's coming out of everywhere. Tradition. Started by the Germans that came over from Germany. And then we took it and made it our own because that's what we do here in America. <laughs> Put some guns and some eagles on it and call yeah. it ours. Hot <laughs> damn. <laughs> Scoot a little closer to me. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's get cozy. We've got some beer in bottles that we're going to try. Yep. We've run out, but we still have some bottles. I get the special stuff because I'm special. I will right, we'll start with this one. Colorado Space. I think this was number one in our Love Brett series. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a very big HP Lovecraft fan. Oh. That one's ready to go. Cool. This is gonna be kind of a porterish kind of beer. It's 100% Britannomyces. It's it gets really kind of crazy. It's got a weird sourness to it. Yeah, smell the tartness right away on the. It nose. was aged in barrels. If you do a stout or anything with Britannomyces, it pulls the astringency out of the malt, out of the darker malt. So it was kind of a neat balance trying to figure out how to get the dark, but not not get that not get that astringency from it. So yeah, you smell kind of the tartness, but it's not super sour. No, the dark malts are there, so you get a little dark yeah. grainy malt character. With some dark fruit. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it makes a lot of fruit characters. But one of those underappreciated beers. One customers don't know what they hey, want. Yeah. If I didn't have customers, I'd be the best brewer in the world. Yeah, craft beer would be great if it wasn't for the customers. Is it still active, yeast, in the yeah, bottle? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bottle condition with the oh, tandemiasis, okay. so. <coughs> uh, I'm allergic to Brett. Me too. But I still want it. It, it makes me fall over. Stagger, makes me drowsy. Makes me stagger around. Slur my speech. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, that's really good. 
Ugh. Maybe I really am allergic to bread. It's the sneezing powder. I add to everything. Oh, uh, okay. Is that the special house it's flavor? It's the house sneezing powder. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? I'm sorry, I guess I shouldn't. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm popping corks. We're, we're drinking. 100% bread IPA. Very pineapple-y. Dry hopped several times. When you're choosing the hop schedule for this one, do you try to pick hops that kind of complement the fruitiness that you get from the bread? Right. But I definitely want that IPA character, so a lot of Cascade and Centennial. Okay. Some Citra, just because why not? This is so interesting. Like, yeah, you get fruit on the nose. Bread Roughly. isn't always necessarily tart. Right. Right. It's right. Sour, like, the, the, this, the Shun House and the Apostit that we have, they're not sour beers at all. So you have to kind of train right. people, like the serving staff, and say it's bread. It's not sour. Most people are afraid of bread, they're, and rightfully so. If it gets in, but it is a yeast, just like Saccharomyces. yeast. And just treat it with respect, and it's just like every other yeast strain. Just do CIP. You'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Cool art too. Who did the art? As local girl, Laura Whitney, she does them for us. The story yeah. tells me what beer to make kind of thing, so I'll read the story. I'm like, oh, this is perfect for You get for inspired. An that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of, like this one, I was like, oh, I was reading this, the Shunned House, he talks about a green mist coming out. I'm like, green mist, IPA, hops. Oh, hops. Yeah. I got it, and that was where it cool. kind of came from. <laughs> I wanted to finish with this one. This is Monk in Mexico. I work with barrel brokers more than anybody. I don't okay. I don't just call a distillery and say I need barrels. It's like, I got tequila barrels. You know what? Give me eight tequila barrels. So I got these barrels and they looked rough. They don't have the same rules as the United States does where a whiskey barrel has to be this, this, Exactly this, this and this bunghole so is exactly this. So these things will sit outside. They'll fill them with tequila, let them sit for two years outside in the elements and then reuse them a million times no leaks. I mean, just like the most solid barrels I've ever had. They looked the worst, but they held together the best. Like I learned something today. Don't judge a barrel by its... Don't yes, judge I a do. barrel by its <laughs> bunghole. <laughs> so I took a Belgian quad with the agave nectar. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, you get all the dark fruit and the elements of the quad, but that tequila flavor, but not overwhelmingly so, because I, I actually don't like tequila. Very interesting blend. That's but really worked cool. out really well. I yeah, it worked out I was great. Very happy with it. You get the aroma of the tequila, a little bit of the flavor, a little bit of the heat, but it just yeah, it all blends together really great. Yeah. Nice aged tequila flavor. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel great. I'm ready for another couple of rounds. You guys want to film another? I know. Episode? I kind of want to drink go. more, but we'll go next door and drink some more. It was a wonderful flight. That I really like your guys's beer. Yeah. And you picked a great flight. This is How we usually have. 10 to 12 beers on tap at any time, all of our own making. Yes, and great pizza next door and great food in the pub as well. I'm glad to have you out. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys, everybody here as well. Cheers. Sorry, I'm not supposed to look at the camera. and beautiful whatever. camera operators. It's okay, we break the fourth wall. Oh, right, 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 right. That's it for this episode of What's on Draft, and we will see you next Monday with another episode. Cheers. Let's do that again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. Okay, this time I need to see more emotion. Can you wiggle your eyebrows a little bit too? Okay. Yeah. That's it for this episode of What's on Draft. We'll see you next Monday with a brand new episode. Thank you, Nick, for all your hospitality. Of course, Tom. Thank you Martin very much. City Brewing. You should definitely check out this brewery and uh, drink all their beer. 135th and Locust. Stop yes. by. We edit a lot of this down. I, I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>